Okay, so that happened. Uh, those of you who follow our channel, you may have noticed that we recently just did an episode on superheroes or real life superheroes. And what we covered in that episode was why we don't see them running around in everyday life, why we don't see like our Captain Americas out there, aside from not having superpowers, but why don't we see our Batmans? And we kind of talked about reasons why they don't really work in real life and what the limitations are. Now, a good chunk of that episode was dedicated to Phoenix Jones. And the reason was because he is the closest we've had to somebody trying to live that persona. And he's actually got a pretty interesting story. And over the past 10 years, I've been following him and we actually covered that. So if you haven't seen that episode, go check that out. It's still pretty interesting to see what he's gone through and what he's done. He's been doing this for 10 years. He's been dressed up in his comic book outfit and he's gone out in the streets. He's tried to fight crime. He's, he's done a lot of good. But over time, like his positivity has been dropping. And in an interview he did last year with the podcast, he sounded very defeated, very jaded. He started saying things like, I was supposed to inspire people to do good. They're not doing good. He goes, people can't get better. He had, had, had an attitude shift. And it was kind of an interesting, knowing him from the beginning and watching his progression, it was kind of a little bit jarring to see where he had gone. And after I heard that, and it's a fascinating story, I'll have a link for that below in the description. I do recommend listening to the podcast. You get a really good insight on what his mission was and what he went through and what he did. But after listening, I started thinking like, well, why was it he jaded? Like, why did it not go the way he wanted it to go? And, and the truth of the matter is, it's because superheroes as we know them, and again, I'm talking about comic book type superheroes, not, 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 not like your firefighters and soldiers, you know, I'm talking about what we idolize as kids and we read in comic books. Why doesn't that really exist today? And the thing is, it's just not practical. And what was interesting was when the episode came out, a lot of people commented, oh, that's really cool, or he is like a superhero, or they didn't know about him, and it was, it was kind of inspiring. But I also got a handful of comments that mentioned that he was kind of known, he was getting known out there for doing illegal stuff, that he was starting to become a drug dealer. And you know, the little kid in me was like, no, I don't, don't tell me that, I don't wanna hear that. I was kind of in denial. And then this bombshell dropped, that the article came out that he was arrested. And I was, just, and my little kid inside of me just went, ah, oh, got crushed. So basically, long story short, he was just arrested for selling drugs. There were rumors, there, there were people trying to report it to the police, so the police actually set up a sting, and an agent contacted him and Venmoed him you know, some money, and met up with him at a predetermined location, gave him some more money, and Phoenix Jones handed him a brown bag, and inside the bag apparently was MDMA, or Molly. And they kind of continued watching him, and then a while later they set up another meeting, and then this time he had cocaine with him. It's kind of a major different turn of events. So a guy who actually stood for, you know, the righteousness and actually tried to make the world better and tried to clean up the streets. And he was very outspoken against drug dealers, but now he's being a charge of the same thing. And on top of that, he apparently has eight traffic violations and driving without a license. So it's really, really disappointing because I had a fun time, you know, working on that episode because I've, I've found him fascinating. Even though the, the comic book aspect is not really a practical way of life, it was still fascinating to hear somebody out there trying to do it. And he's also a very accomplished martial artist, so he had skills that go along with it. And there's the thing that keeps playing in my head over and over and over and over and over is the quote from The Dark Knight that said, you either die a hero or you see yourself live long enough to become the villain. And again, in all seriousness, this is kind of one reason why real life comic book superheroes don't really exist because the concept doesn't really work in real life. It's not practical. Comic books are an escape. They're a fantasy. And the reason we like them so much is because we enjoy watching larger than life people go up against insurmountable obstacles and defeat problems bigger than us, things that we can't fight. It's, it kind of instills us with hope. We, we like that fantasy side of it. It is an escape. That's why there's so much fun. We look at a Marvel movie and we're like, we don't expect to see Captain America go running down the street, but it'd be cool if he did because you know he's someone who can solve bigger problems. You can't punch real problems away. Because when it boils down to things like crime and drugs, it's not just a thing that happens. You know, it's, it's indicative of a systemic problem. And problems like that, you need better, so you need deeper solutions. So if you want a systemic change, you have to come up with a systemic solution. And it doesn't happen overnight. It can happen, but it takes a lot of effort, it takes time, and it takes people working together to do it. It's not an overnight, I'm gonna go punch you in the face type of thing. There are real superheroes in the world. You know, as far as I'm concerned, soldiers, cops, paramedics, nurses, doctors, parents, teachers, firefighters, Anyone that puts their effort out there to make somebody's day a little bit better, a little bit smarter, or a little bit safer is a hero in my book. So that's where the change happens. And it's the same thing in the martial arts. I think most of us can relate to the fact is that when you start training, you don't become a black belt overnight. It takes time. But if you do, we have another video for you to watch. So we understand that that change happens over a longer period of time. It's not a snap quick, I punch you, I do just one action and everything's all better. 
there's a story that that's out there that I always kind of liked. It's um, a little boys on the beach and there uh, it's low tide and there are thousands of starfish all over the beach. And the little boy is picking one up and he's throwing it back in the water. Picks up another one, throws it back in the water. And an old man observes him, walks up to the little boy and goes, son, what are you doing? And he goes, well, I'm, I'm trying to throw them back in the water because if I don't, they're, they're not gonna live. And the old man laughs, he goes, do you realize there's thousands of starfish? You can't possibly make a difference. And the kid picks one up, throws it in the water, he goes, well, I did to that one. And as martial artists, I think that's a role we can all take on too because we can be the positive example. I've noticed a lot in the comment sections. I see viewers helping out other viewers in terms of you know recommendations for schools or arts or helping people overcome challenges. I'm seeing that on a daily basis and it makes me really happy because that's the whole purpose of the arts. That's why we have this channel, to help you become a better you. And that's how change happens.